Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, at the Future Technologies Conference 2018 in Canada, Vancouver. And next to me, I have Daria Loy. She's working for Intel Corporation. Daria Loy is an experienced researcher and publisher in the field of user experience in relation to intelligent systems and even more specific, effective computing. She submitted a paper which discusses people perceptions, attitudes, thresholds and expectations on intelligent systems and comes up with 10 design guidelines for intelligent systems to come. Welcome Daria. Very lovely being here with you. Yeah. Okay. Hey, can you give an example of an intelligent system? So intelligent system on a higher level is really a system that leverages the power of artificial intelligence to conduct you know, something that you're trying to achieve. So for instance, if you are in the context of a smart home, right, I like to look at it as using technology to sense what's happening, mm -hmm. then using different types of technology or algorithms in this case to make sense of what you've captured as data, and then utilize that information to act. And so really an intelligent system from the perspective is about being able to utilize different types of both hardware and software technologies to enact something that you're trying to achieve for the end user. Clear. What are potential societal risks of intelligent systems? How do you look, for example, um, at the animated uh, movie WALL-E, mm -hmm. uh, where we end up with a world full of people unable to think uh, and act for themselves because intelligent systems uh, think and act for them? Well, you know, I think with technology, I always look at technology as something that's got yin and yang. Mm. So there is always an opportunity to do something good as well as something not so good, right? So the same is with AI. Mm. There is a great opportunity to do something fantastic. that can be life-changing. But unfortunately, there's also opportunities to not do that and to do something that uh, uh, create a situation like in Walid where we become lazy, you don't use your brain anymore, and you're not empowered anymore. So I think ultimately it's really uh, up to us, all those that are working in this world, to ensure that we stay on one side of that kind of dichotomy, and then you can have really life-changing technologies. Yeah. And then you can really resolve real problems, because to me, life-changing technologies are not the one that gives you the bigger words, mm. but they're really the one that focus on real problems. Like one example that I'm working on in, you know, at Intel Labs is really looking at how can we use smart technologies inside an home environment to empower, for instance, uh, elderly people. Yeah. You know, how can we use this sense and sense making to empower them to live their lives and aging in place as long as they wish to uh, on their own terms? Yeah. Hey, what have you found in your research regarding how people's knowledge of intelligent systems impact their understanding of and also willingness to embrace such systems? So there were a lot of things that I learned through my research. One is that I like to call the domino effect of smart things. And this is when people that even are more skeptical about uh, uh, artificial intelligence power system might maybe incorporate in their life a little technology. And then through use, they discover suddenly that there's some value for them. Mm. And so this is where it becomes a domino effect. You buy what's one in it, and then... What's in it for me? Yeah, and then once you learn that, then people tend to buy more and more, even more than probably they need in some cases. Yeah. Now, that actually is good for those that sell those technology because, of course, they sell more, but also comes with great responsibility because as you put more things in your home, they need to be able to talk to each other in a way that is compelling and in a way that doesn't break down. So that was one part that I've learned. The other one is the reason why people have this dominant effect is because once they use these technologies and they start finding ROI, return on investment, then they really want to have them in their lives. So yeah. what, what we understand from that is that we need to provide that ROI. And during the research, I learned that the ROI is very high with what I call helper usages. And those are the ones that very much focus on saving energy, saving frustration, saving your property value, really helping you with everyday, very uh, efficiency, if you like, and very baseline needs. Mm. Now, that doesn't mean that the other things that are more sophisticated are not important. But what it means is that these very high return on investment usages are the ones that are going to compel people to consider this technology. Yeah. And then, you know, the last thing, you know, that I want to mention about what I've learned is really has got to do with the notion of control. And people over and over told me, I don't want to be controlled by these technologies. 
I don't want to become, you know, the situation of Wally that yeah. you mentioned earlier. Yeah. What I actually want, I want to be controlled. So it was very interesting to see how people over and over and over again told me, I want to be boss. Yeah. You know, Clear. I want to be above these yeah. technologies. And you explicitly uh, describe people's need to maintain control over intelligence system. Do you see a potential loss of control, uh, to keep the movie analogy, um, yeah. such as with Skynet in the Terminator uh, movies, yeah. and, and why? Yeah, as I was mentioning earlier, I think the opportunity to lose control is very high, right? It really depends all on how we design these technologies. Yeah. And so really a lesson to be learned here, that you want to have people, the end users of those technology, to participate, yeah. to be participants, not objects, of a design, but participants in the design is very important. And because that is gonna empower them yeah. to be in control and to decide when to be in control and how much control to hand over to a machine. Yeah. Hey, one difficult question. You have, um, you have designed 10 guidelines in your paper. What is the most important one? You know, like, they are kind of almost in a sequence of importance. So, you know, uh, on a very high level, guideline number one is really about being ethical, really to make decisions that are ethical. And by this I mean not only as a company, make ethical decisions, but also the individual level. Being able at every moment of your life when you're developing these technologies to put a stick in the ground and say, this is where I stand. Yeah. But also for the conference where I mean, I would say guideline number two is absolutely fundamental. And guideline number two talks about what I call the minimize intrusion mantra. And this is really about recognizing that although it's true with, for instance, machine learning, the more data you accumulate, the better the inferences may be, the accuracy increases, right? The reality is that we need to be respectful of end users. And mm. therefore, we need to minimize the amount of data that we collect to respect yeah. their needs and wants. Yeah. One more question. What safeguards, other than an appeal to the moral and ethical responsibility of developers and designers can be put in place to make sure intelligent systems are designed and built to have the best possible impact to the largest number, largest number of people? <coughs> Well, obviously, the ethical imperatives and all that part is fundamental. Yeah. And, and, but nobody is going to ever say, I want to do something unethical. So mm -hmm. obviously, it's important, but it's accepted. Now, I think what really we need, uh, and this is you know, why I did this uh, paper on the guidelines, is one attempt in that direction, along many other attempts by many other colleagues around the world, to really be more specific. So that's what we need. We need to have guidelines that speak the language of the developers. We need to write them in a way that can understand the value and we be more specific in what we're asking. Because saying, please be ethical, be, please follow, I mean, obviously everybody wants to do the right thing. But then how you do it, those are the guidelines we need to provide. They are more specific and more descriptive. descriptive. Thank you so much, Daria, for being here today. You're so welcome. Lovely being here. And when you like this video, go to the website because we have loads of more movies over there and um, they're all recorded here in Vancouver at the Future Technologies Conference 2018. Thank you for watching. Thank you.